Hey everybody, it's John Hope Bryant. This is a, a very serious part of the series tied to my book, How the Poor Can Save Capitalism, uh, Rebuilding the Path to the Middle Class, uh, Making a Solution for the 100%. It's, it was up until recently uh, the only best-selling book in the world by an African-American on economics. It's now been joined by uh, at least one other author who uh, shares that distinction, so I'm glad to share the stage. It's what I call silver rights. So here's the I'm the founder of Operation Hope, by the way, if you don't uh, know that, the CEO of, of Brian Group Companies, please uh, add your comments below as you, we get into this. I'm going to break up two big myths about wealth uh, in America and in the world. Uh, this is something that, that people really, is not common knowledge, uh, and it's not even in necessarily intuitive. Uh, and then I'm going to give you, uh, give you a setup for what we're going to talk about next, uh, because I'm going to come back to this um, in at least two more uh, sessions. Okay, here's the first big myth, big lie uh, about wealth. Uh, rich people. We hate rich people. That's a lie. <laughs> no, we don't. We hate rich people until we become rich. <laughs> Think about it. We hate rich people until we become rich. And really, we don't hate rich people. No different than the Bible doesn't say we hate money. The Bible suggests that we should hate the love of money. So you don't hate rich people. You, hate, you really have a disdain for people who, who, who are gaming the system, who are playing favorites, who are rigging capitalism, who have used uh, a system to be about me and not about we, who are practicing bad capitalism where they benefit and you lose versus everybody rising and everybody uh, wins in the, the process of, of people making money. You know, Steve Jobs making Apple, uh, moving from a company with $2.50 a share to the wealthiest company in the world, even having more money than the U.S. government uh, at, some, at one point, you know, lifted every, all boats, helped everybody, you know, created products like this iPhone and other things that we use, this iPad Pro I'm using now. Okay, so that's the first big myth, and this one's easy. We hate rich people. Stop saying that. We don't. We hate rich people until we become rich. We want everybody... Uh, if they have a chance to uh, to work hard, play by the rules, do the right thing, and become prosperous. You want everybody to do that, which leads to the second myth. The second real big myth is that somehow big business is somehow running this country, and every big company is evil and was always evil, and all wealth comes from wealth. It's a lie. Here's where wealth comes from. It's very simple. Rich people, uh, uh, I mean, wealth comes from governments, government contracting, war, crime and poor people now uh the first three are easy uh and that's actually universal you can firstly particularly in corrupt nations uh that makes a lot of sense uh what i just said but when i say poor people you probably think i'm saying the uh you know playing on the poor no i don't mean that i mean that every big company was once a small one i mean that walmart was sam walton with a pickup truck in a storefront he was an immigrant i mean cnn was ted turner you know, and his first show was a hog show. And I'm not exaggerating. It was a hog show with like four viewers, and one of them was his mother. I'm talking about UPS. It was Jim Casey with a hundred bucks and a bicycle. Thank you, Bridget, for saying you don't hate uh, rich people. Uh, money is a tool. That's right. And you should use it as a tool to empower yourself. And I'll tell you something else. Uh, even if you want to distribute money like a socialist, people say, oh, I want certain person to be president, this and that and the other thing. He's going to give us everything we need. Even if you want to distribute money like a socialist, you got to first collect money like a capitalist. Money literally does not grow on trees. What, what, what do you think taxpayers come? What do you think tax money comes from to fund your nonprofit? It comes from taxpayers. Where do taxpayers come from? It comes from a job. Where are the most jobs in America comes from? I love statistics and facts because they are stubborn things. Ninety-two percent of all jobs in America are private sector jobs. Eight percent of jobs are government jobs. So let's not get it twisted. Back to the story. So, well, Coca-Cola, a partner, company that I partner with, by the way, it, where did it come from? A poor immigrant. Uh, in fact, he was a pharmacist. He had a little, a little shop, and um, he, you know, he during the Civil War, people were uh, in a lot of pain, so he created a formula um, with coca leads and other things to, you know, it was a, you know, it, it had I think elements in it back in that day that were drug induced or would at least, you know, give you some kind of uh, aphrodisiac will to, to sort of numb the pain. That was ultimately run out of uh, the product, but the first pharmacist uh, that created the product, it was about really about pain abatement. Uh, he didn't know what he had on his hands, 
um, was really became a user of his own product, unfortunately, because he, he was also in pain, uh, as was his son. And they sold it to a banker, oddly enough, so, uh, for 500 bucks. And when the banker offered them stock, they said no. <laughs> and, they, and he and his son, the pharmacist and his son, were dead within a year. Uh, and of course, the banker uh, not, took the company public, grew the company, uh, offered stock to uh, people who were shareholders in the bank. They didn't have money to finance the stock, to pay for the stock, he to finance it for them. The company that took the stock refused to take a fee, they just wanted stock. It was $100,000 in change. That company uh, ultimately turned into what you now call SunTrust Bank. And that stock for a hundred and some odd thousand dollars ended up being several billion dollars. Uh, and uh, is what set up their foundation later on. So if you're getting a check from, from SunTrust Bank's foundation, you're getting a, a check that came from all these iterations ago that started with 500 bucks and a guy who refused to take stock for his own company. Uh, we can go on, you know, Goldman Sachs with a guy named Goldman and a guy named Sachs. I mean, literally, I'm not joking. It's like a guy with a briefcase, two guys with a briefcase off the boat, two Jewish guys who nobody listened to. Bank of America was literally Bank of Italy with, with a, I think the guy's name was Mario Tosi, but I may be wrong about the guy's name, but it was in, it was in San Francisco and he was, you know, banking, bank, banquette comes from the bar, banking on the bar. That's where it came from. So they would literally bank on bar tops uh, in San Francisco. And when the tragedy hit San Francisco in the early 20th century, uh, no one would give anybody small businesses a loan. So this banker uh, would give $200 loans to small business owners because he believed in them. Everybody said, oh, he's crazy. He's never, he never get his money back. Well, th that risk taking on entrepreneurs and small business owners turned into this what's now a fairly conservative bank called Bank of America. Uh, and I can go, I can riff on this forever. I mean, you name the business. I mean, don't trust me. Think about this. Uh, thank you, Beverly uh, Rice, for joining. And thank you, Esther, for your comment about Teach. Um, Sheila says, uh, so true, those who don't use it for good don't normally keep it. That's truly, that's, that's, trek, that's correct. There's, there's a myth about, there's a story about, about uh, money over wealth. The first generation makes, makes it, second generation spends it, third generation loses it. So, so every big company was once a small company. You name the company. You, you name the name down here, say, John, I don't believe you. Name the name and I'll tell you where they came from. Um, you know, the Ford uh, Foundation came from Henry Ford that made a lot of money with the Ford Motor Company. Uh, I'm honored to know Henry Ford III uh, today as a new friend. Uh, and I'll be talking about that you know, in a few series later. But, but, but that created the middle class because Henry Ford, uh, it was 100 motor companies that came out at that time, um, but only one was smart enough to pay his workers enough to buy the car that they were making. And boom, there, we go, there you go, the middle class. That, that, that effort to pay your workers enough to buy the car that they were making created what we now call the middle class. So wealth came from small businesses. So let me give you a couple of numbers. I'm at eight minutes, so let me try to wrap this wrap this up. I think I'm, hey, Steve, how my CPA just joined. I, I know I'm going to be doing something right when my CPA joins the conversation. He's a good guy, by the way. So, so uh, let me give you a couple of numbers. There are 350 million people in America. There's 7 billion people in the world. All this is in my book, How the Poor Save Capitalism. The whole global economy is $62 trillion. If you don't get these numbers right, you can replay the tape. Uh, America is $17, $18 trillion. A, th a fourth of the whole world economy is the American economy. We're the largest thing in the world. Don't let anybody tell you China's kicking our rear end or, you know, we're done. We're the largest economy in, on the planet. 350 million people in this country, give or take, out of six, seven, six, six, seven billion people in the world. Um, so you say, where is that all that wealth coming from? Where, you know, come on, John. Okay, so let me b debunk some things. Uh, you, so you, you say, well, you know, what do you tell your children? Go to school K through 12, go to, go to high school, get a, get a degree, great, do that. Go to college, get a degree, great, do that. Please don't get $200,000 worth of student loans as you do that. Uh, and then go work for a big company or government, neither of which are hiring. <laughs> because big companies don't, don't make money on people, they make money on efficiencies, right? That, that's, that, that's not, that's so, so, where the, so, so, so you're li literally looking, looking for love in all the wrong places, which is, I believe, one of the reasons our kids are dropping out of high school because education is not connecting with aspirations. So where do jobs come from? Here are the numbers. There are 26 million companies in America out of 350 million people, but most of those are tax shelters. Only 6 million of the companies create one job or more, and only, hold on, 974, this number may be off by a few numbers because it was, the number's a few months old, but less than 1,000 of these companies employ 10,000 people or more. Half of all jobs in America are 100, are 100 employees or less. Think about what you do in a week. Go to a nail salon. How many people work there? Four people. Um, this is a big nail salon. Barbershop. How many people work there, guys? 
um, six people, um, going to a dentist shop, you know, dentist office. How many people work there? You know, six people. You, you can, we can riff on, riff on this all day. Go to a restaurant. That's probably the biggest place you go to. How many people work there? 20. So in the course of a week, it's right in front of you. It's hiding in plain sight. Half of all jobs in America, 100 employees or less. 70% of all jobs in America, 500 employees or less. And all job growth comes to small businesses, startups, and shoot-ups in years three through year seven. Boom. Drop the mic. So let's stop saying we hate rich people. No, we hate corrupt people. Let's try start, start trying to, to, to tell our child to try to get rich ethically and honestly, and don't just get rich, but build wealth. Don't just be somebody who cashes a check, be somebody who writes a check, meaning an employer. Become an entrepreneur, small business owner, and let's set yourself free. That is silver rights. All right, hey, Dahlia Acosta, who just joined. I just finished, it's 1048, but you can watch it and share it with your friends. Uh, we just broke down two big lies about wealth um, and if you don't believe these, you will be poor. You hang around nine broke people, I guarantee you, you'll be the 10th. I'm out.